Good morning, everybody. We are uh, beginning a new series today called Order, and uh, if it's okay with you, we're going to get our ducks in a row over the next few weeks, and, uh, and specifically uh, in the area of our time, talent, and treasure. You know, God has a plan for the way we use the resources that he has blessed us with, and as a believer, uh, when you say yes to Jesus, you are blessed. Can you, can you just say that with me? I am blessed. So everybody has a measure of, of resources, a measure of finances, a measure of time, a measure of influence. Like everybody has a measure. And it's not as much about how much you have, it's what you do with what you got. It's not as much about what you have, how much you have, it's about what you do with what you got. Amen. We can end the series. We can just move on to something else now. And, and, and so I just want to begin from the, from the very beginning is we are blessed. When, man, we've got heaven. And if he didn't give us anything else, y'all, we got heaven. But there's a whole lot more that comes with this life and the time, the space that you've been given. You are blessed with a life. You are blessed with influence. You're blessed with a family. You're blessed with talents and abilities. And, and, uh, and you know, so, so all of these different things. So I just want to fr start from the get-go of, of getting into this series of that, that we, are, we are blessed. And, and, but we don't want to just be blessed for us. We want to be blessed to be a blessing. It actually is, is what can limit the amount of blessing or the capacity that we can handle the blessing of God based on how we position ourselves to be a blessing to others. God's way too big to be kept to ourselves. His goodness is way too good to, to be kept to ourselves. He, he is not a secret to be kept. He is one to be shouted from the mountain. He said, I've called you to be a, a, a what a light. On the top of a hill. Why? So that everybody around can see you. Not see the us. We're here to make Jesus famous in our homes, our community, in the world. And we began the year several months ago, way back when 2023 began. We believe the word the Lord gave us was a, 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 the word was freedom, but that he wanted us to be a church of freedom. That, that there are a lot of times we are, we are fine, but we're not free. And Jesus didn't pay the price for us to be fine. You know, it's the Christian F word. How you doing? Fine. How you doing? Fine. How's your family? Fine. How's your marriage? Fine. How's your kids? Fine. How's your finances? Fine. And they may be fine, but we're not free. Are we really living the free life? Are we really in it? And this verse is, is what we've kind of used as an umbrella for this year. Jesus, or Paul said that Jesus came. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Then stand firm, not wobbly, not on one leg, not trying to balance, but to stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So what is he saying? I've set you free. Don't go back there. Don't go back to slavery. Don't go back to being enslaved, but to be free, to stand free. And, and we learn that freedom, or we're in the process of learning, that freedom is a journey, not a destination. You know, there's more freedom where that came from. And until we get to heaven, guess what? You're going to wake up tomorrow and there is more freedom that he wants to lead you into. Some of you are in a place of your life where you feel very free when it comes to finances, when it comes to resources. Maybe you are so free in your talent and you're using your gifts and your abilities, but, but there is more where that came from. Some of you are struggling to get your ducks in a row. It feels like the more ducks you get, the more they get out of a row, get out of a row. You know, if you add more to dysfunction, guess what, that, what happens? It just becomes more dysfunctional. And, and a lot of us, from the very beginning, there were some things that we got out of order in different areas of our life. And one that we're going to focus on over the next few weeks is, is finances. And, and you go, oh, Lord, is there an offering at the end of this series? Some of you are like, yes, I can't wait. Is there an offering at the end of this series? And there's no offering. Because this, this isn't about uh, an offering that later on in the year we'll do our, our Heart for the House offering. And I'm excited about that. Any Life Gators excited about an opportunity to, to bring your first and best? But this is about order. And, and so just for maybe you're in a season where you, you are, man, you're struggling to make ends meet. And it's like, get your ducks in a row. Maybe you're in a place where your needs are met, your basic needs are met. And you're even to the place where you have extra, but as soon as you get it, it's gone. And you don't know exactly 
where, where it goes. And it's like, man, we were able to, to do things, but, but then all of a sudden, I don't know where it went. And then some of you are in a season where you the blessing of God financially, you've seen uh, your needs are met, and you're even in a place where, okay, it's time to retire, and I'm thinking investment, I'm thinking retirement, I'm thinking how can I position myself to be a greater blessing in the kingdom. So wherever you are, there's more freedom in God's order where he wants us to, he wants us not to just be a place uh, uh, receiving his blessing, but to position ourselves to be a blessing everywhere we go. So this hits you anybody. I mean, it hits students, it hits, it hits uh, maybe you're in a later season of your life and you're like, man, I've, I've got enough, unless my grandkids stay with me and then they take it all or, or wherever you are, God wants to position us to be a blessing and it's for freedom. So I, I just wanna help connect this to this is not just, well, this is not an area that we need to focus or we're fine, that we really, we wanna be free in this area. And we believe this is a word that the Lord gave us from the, from the very beginning of the year. He said, you know, there are people that, that are generous. We've learned generosity in some way, but we're still in debt. So we're generous and we want to give, but we're still in debt. It's just getting quiet in here. Don't, don't get quiet on me. We, we, we want to be generous or we see opportunities to give, but there's still, we're in this tension that if I give and if I'm generous with my finances, then, then what if I don't have enough? There, there's a place where, where we begin to see generosity. We put God first and our best. We, became, we become tithers and givers. We're bringing God. The, so we begin to see the order in our lives, but it becomes almost a habit and we stop. It doesn't become as much worship. So what I mean by that is it's just automatic. And, and then all of a sudden, maybe there's a bill that comes or there's something that happens and we enter a season and, and we don't protect the tithe. We go back to old ways. And we kind of find ourselves back in the old place. So it's this, man, I'm learning, but then I come back. For instance, maybe you did the 90-day tithing challenge and you said, man, I'm, I'm seeing promotion. I'm seeing God do these things as I put God first in this area. But then something happens and you're squeezed and we kind of go back to old ways. And, and so I want to show you through the word of God that, that it's generosity is just one part of blessing. Generosity, God wants us to be givers. God is very generous, but God is also a very good steward. And he's a very good investor. And, and he wants us to think in order to have our ducks in a row, our ducks in order, not just so that we can have enough for us, but, but how many of you want to be in a position in your life that when there's an opportunity that God says, here, I want you to meet this need, you're able to meet the need without even thinking about it? I do. And, and maybe whether that need is $5 whether it's, whether it's, you can't get much for five cents anymore, but you know, $5 or, or whether it's, you know, you pull up to a gas pump and you're getting gas, but you see somebody, they got, they got $2 to fill up their tank. Well, that doesn't get you very far, but for you to be in a position to go, Hey, I've, I've budgeted and I've positioned myself so that I can fill up my tank, but I'm going to be a blessing to this, this, this family over here just to say, God is good. He loves you. He sees you and he meets your needs. And, and, and so, and, and not just in the realm of finances, but, but in all the different areas, to give people time, to give people your talent or to use y your gifts. And, and I just want to tell you from the, from the get-go, LifeGate's been around seven, what, how old are we now? 18 years. 18, and you're a generous church. I mean, all the things that we have accomplished and done through our time, talent, and treasures, you are generous. But I believe the Lord's leading us into a season to steward, to make sure that we are stewarding well the blessing of God, that we don't just see it come and go in seasons, that we, that we don't, that, that we, we aren't influenced or rattled by the fluctuating economy around us, that we live in God's economy, that we put our trust and our confidence in him. And I'm not talking about, well, well, Lord, we're trusting you just to hang on. God doesn't want you just hanging on. God wants you blessed to be a blessing. And so I believe he has, for, has something for us uh, in this. And so um, not to give up, but to, to, to really be able to, to, to be um, blessed, to be a blessing. But a giving and being generous is only one side of that. And we're going to talk more about it. You know, grooming, when you are taught how to groom uh, yourself, so that's combing your hair, washing your hair, washing your body. We used to have a song with, well, I won't embarrass him with a song, but I wrote a song about wash your I can't, okay. Wash your body, mm, mm. Wash your body, 
Wash your body, wash your body now. That was the bath song with my kids growing up. And, and uh, you're welcome. One kid is like, yeah, and the other kid's like, do not look at me. Please do not see me. I am not his kid. So, so you're grooming, you're washing your body, but, but, but it's, it's silly to, to say, okay, I, I combed my hair, but I still stink. Because you got one part of the grooming, but it, you left out a lot of other parts. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and so a lot of times we look at the order that God says about things and we go, I've got part of it. And, and if in that part of it, we see so, some blessing. If you comb your hair, even if you smell bad, you're going to look good, but you're still going to stink. And some of us, when it comes to this area, we have these blips or we have these times where it looks like, man, we're doing good. We're feeling good, but all of a sudden something happens. Like, like our bills are being paid, but we're one week away. Like it's week to week. And, and, and listen, that, that's, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But this year, we are taking responsibility for the freedom that he's given us. We want to steward well. If it's, if it's for freedom that Christ has set us free, this year we're deciding it's going to be different. And we've got to make a decision to say, I'm, I'm tired of going week to week. I'm tired of not having my needs met. I'm tired of feeling like God's given me the gift of giving, but I haven't learned stewardship in a way to be able to say yes when God opens up doors. And this, this isn't about just being generous to your church. This is about being generous everywhere. And, and so if I really, if I really, if I really want to be responsible, then, then I've got to, I've got to, I, this is not condemnation, but I've really got to say, I, I want to do it God's way. Listen, God knows how to order your ducks. God knows how to, to do what he wants to do through you. We've just got, we've got to trust him. And so the second component of blessing is stewardship. Stewardship. And stewardship is not a bad word. Stewardship pertains to every area of your life, not just finances. I want to show you this connection in the Bible that I think is really cool. If you don't think it is, just pretend with me so it makes me feel better that, that you think it's as, it's as cool as I do. But the word stewardship and economy in the Bible, in the Greek, it's the same word. Stewardship and economy. I'm going to try to pronounce the, the Greek word uh, oikonomia. Oikonomia. <laughs> Notice in the middle it says, oh no. <laughs> I was like... A lot of us, that's where we live is the oh no part. But, but stewardship and economy. So the early Christians, when they heard stewardship or management, it actually means house law. It means there is a law or a management over your house that is not determined by this economy. God has a rule and a law for your house. That's good news. Especially right now when, when the economy seems like, oh my gosh, is, does inflation ever stop? But, but even in that, there is a high, we're a part of the kingdom of God. Remember, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we live in this world. Amy brought an incredible message last week that, that we live in this world, but we're not of this world. You're an alien. Now, you don't have six eyes, but, but, but you're, in, you're, you're an alien, a foreigner in this world. And so if we're a foreigner in this world, then we need to learn how we exist in the system of this world, but we have a greater system that determines the blessing that's on our house. So even when all these different things are around us, if I will live by God's law, that if his law and his word is what, is what uh, governs over my house, then I can live in blessing, the, the two parts of blessing, generosity and stewardship in every season. Remember, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will bear fruit in how many seasons? Every season. So that no matter what, and, and, if, and, and let, me, let me ask you this. If we are distracted, if money is a distraction instead of a tool, we will miss the opportunity to be a blessing to others. It's supposed to be a tool. Time is a tool. But if you're always running out of it and you don't have enough of it, you won't have enough to be a blessing to somebody else. Your talent, 
if you think your talent is only a means to greater income and greater influence and not for the kingdom, then we'll use it for our own benefit and we won't steward it well for the purpose of the kingdom. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So, so I understand you, you're in this world. Ho- hopefully you're, you're not out of this world, but, but we are from a different place. And so we, if we want our ducks in a row as believers, we need to get God's word on, on, what, this, on, on, on what he says about generosity and stewardship. Uh, I've got a friend, Landon's gonna help me. You guys give Landon a hand as he comes up. Come on, Landon. They don't even know what they're giving you a hand for, but they're, so, so Landon's gonna help me. He's gonna stand right over here and, and we may come back to him in a minute. I'm gonna see how long, Landon's just gonna stand on one, one leg, just balance right there. Doing pretty good, man. All right, good. All right, so ch- check this out. There's a definition of, uh-uh, you got to balance. <laughs> We're going to have to find somebody else, Landon. <laughs> Stewardship. Here's a simple defin- uh, definition. The process of being responsible with someone else's property. Someone else's property while it's been entrusted so it belongs to somebody else, but it's been entrusted. Here's a biblical definition of stewardship. This, it gets even bigger. They put it on the screen for you. Check this out. Recognition and faithful. Everybody say faithful. Faithful management of God's gifts, including time, talent, possessions, and resources. For what? For the purpose of advancing God's kingdom and serving others. Recognition. Fa- you, you okay over there? All right. Recognition and faithful management of God's gifts, including time, talent, possessions, and resources for the purpose of advancing God's kingdom and serving others. All right, so Landon is, is doing such a great job balancing on one leg. Did you practice this this week? Did you, did you, yes. There's probably some yoga move. Uh, you look really graceful, just the way you're hanging in there. So, so Landon's just balancing, and, and, and he's on one leg. He's on one leg. You, he's giving. He's on the one leg of, of generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave, and so gen- he's learning generosity. He wants to give. He wants to, he's a part of heart for the house. He goes, man, I want to be able to, to give to advance the kingdom. So he's standing on this one leg, and he's doing, doing pretty good, even with me pushing him. And so, so there's a measure there's a measure of generosity in his life, and we know this, y'all. You've been around long enough. When you're generous, God, what does he do? You can't outgive God. He will, he will be generous back with you. Why? Stewardship. These are some building materials that I have today for the purpose of building the kingdom. Not building your kingdom. We you stop being a distraction? I'm trying to teach here. So... So God, because of his generosity, him and Amberly are they're generous with the kingdom, then God entrusts him with a box of screws to build the kingdom. There you go. Praise God. Look at that. There's a measure that God says, hey, I can trust you with, with a box of screws. But, but, then, but then they're continuing to be generous, and, and God says, man, I, I want to be able to trust you with even more to build the purpose, uh, for the purpose of the kingdom. And he says, here, I'm going to give you some bricks to, to build too. How you doing there? You, you okay? Can you juggle with them? Maybe something like that? No, okay. So, so he's, he's taking care of that. But then he's being generous. God says, okay, you're generous. I want to give you even more so that you're able to build the kingdom. Whew, I can't even lift that one hand. So, so I'm just going to have you stand there for just a few minutes. How you doing there? All right, so, so, so here's what I want you to do. I, I want you to try to move around a little bit. Can you, can you move? Yeah, a little bit. Can you take a step can you, without, without putting your leg down? Can you? No, you can't. You're kind of stuck. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, go ahead and let, can, we, can he put his leg down? Would that be okay with y'all? All right, go ahead, put your, put your leg down. And then, and then I want you to, to hold the brick with two hands, and, and I just want to interview a little bit. Is it easier to hold what God gave you to build with when you're on two legs instead of one? Can, can you move the brick around a little bit? Like everywhere that God wants you to move his resources, because being a good steward isn't, isn't taking care of my resources, it's taking care of God's. But, but now he's positioned himself with two legs to move what God wants moved around, and God can entrust him with, with whether it's this or whether it's this, God can entrust him with more 
because he's got two legs. It takes two legs, generosity and stewardship, to stand firm and to be a, to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Landon. Great job. Y'all give him a hand. <laughs> and you remember the, the, the cartoon? I know I'm, kind of, I'm going back for, for some of you, but there was the cartoon where there, there was one foot nailed to the ground. And what happens when you have one foot nailed to the ground? I, I wanted to use this illustration, but Landon was, didn't say yes to this. I was going to nail his foot to the ground. But, but what happens when I, when I have one foot nailed to the ground? And some of us, that describes us with our finances. We want to be generous. We know that we should because it's a representation of God. But, but we haven't positioned ourselves in stewardship. We have the one leg of generosity, but there's two legs. Generosity and stewardship. And your God is a very good steward. He's a good investor. And, and if you are generous, but you're not a good steward, God won't open the windows of blessing over your life. Because what, what, what will he do? He'll find somebody else who can be a good steward of the resources that he wants to funnel to them. Why? Because if he were to open the windows of heaven, you wouldn't be able to contain it because as soon as you get it, it's going right out of your hand. Not in a generous way, but because you haven't positioned yourself to be a good steward. If you're a good steward on the leg of stewardship, but you're not generous, that's what we call tight. Don't nudge the tight person next to you. And, and because it's, it's, God can't, God, in the same thing, God won't, God won't bless with more or increase the capacity because, because you're not living with an open hand. And so it takes both of these things to come together. What I think is really interesting is how, how sometimes God will put couples together where one thinks steward and one thinks generosity and you become a great team when you, don't, when you fight together and not fight against each other. <laughs> And you're, you're able to kind of to, to, to grow. And, and, and so some of us weren't taught stewardship. Some of us are taught that we should be generous or that we should be a good steward, but, but we don't have the, the handlebars or, or the, 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 just the simple instruction. Well, what does God say? How, how are we supposed to do this? You know, this is not about being rich. When we get to heaven, what are the words that we're wanting to hear from our Father? Good and faithful servant. He's not going to say good and rich servant. He's not going to say good and poor servant. Some of us have a, a, a maybe not you, but, but there's been a thing, okay, well, if I'm saved, I'm supposed to be struggling. I'm, I'm, supposed to, I'm not supposed to have, not have, have enough. And, and you may not be driving a Ferrari, but you know it's okay to have a car with four wheels that doesn't break down. It's okay. It's okay to want to send your, your kids to, to a school that, to, and to, to help pay for their tuition. It, it's okay to, to want a house with an extra bedroom so your kids don't have to share. It's okay to, have the, the, to be in a position financially to get braces when, when you need braces. And so I, I don't, there, there's, there's extremes of, of both sides. So, but I, I want you to understand from the beginning, we have taken stewardship and prosperity and it's almost become a bad word. Instead, it's God's word. Generosity and stewardship are about, not about us, they're about the kingdom. God is looking for people who will be faithful with what they have. And, and here's the deal. Some of you, God's entrusted you with this. Be faithful with this. Stand on two legs and be faithful with this. Some of you have, have a, a different capacity. It's not better. Your capacity just looks different. When, when you got young kids at home and you're buying diapers like every other day, your capacity looks different. When you're sending kids to college and they haven't started giving you money back for it, <laughs> your capacity looks different. And so this isn't, this isn't, well, I don't have enough so I can't be a blessing. Everybody can be a blessing. That's, that's the cool thing about God. He has picked everybody with capacities. And so some of us have bricks, some of us have screws, but, but you don't want to just have a house full of bricks and not screws. And then when, when, it, when it comes time that God wants to increase our capacity and we want to be faithful with wherever we are, but you can't do that if you're standing on one leg, you got to stand on two. Amen? 
Check out this verse. It's, it's a really a misunderstood verse in the Bible. And, and uh, if you've been around LifeGate for a while, you've, you've heard us talk about this. But uh, Genesis 12, 2, this was in the very beginning, first book in the Bible. And this was Abraham. Remember, Father Abraham. And, and the, this was the promise that the Lord gave him. We sing a song today, you're the God of the promise. Here is God's promise to Abraham and all that would come after him and serve God. It says, I will make you a great nation. God, this is God's promise to Abraham. I will make you a great, great nation. I will bless you. Who's going to bless you? God. Blessing is God's idea, not the preacher's idea. Tithing, putting God first in your finances and resources, that's God's idea. A preacher didn't invent it. Can I get an amen from a life gator? Okay, good. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless you, but there's another part. So you'll be a blessing. Bless to be a blessing. Bless to be a blessing. There's two legs. And why do we have to walk on two legs? Because he wants to bless us, but he wants us to be a blessing. He wants us to be able to say yes when the door, the doors are open to see the kingdom extended. Yes to what God wants to do, not just in us and through us. And so God's looking for rivers, not reservoirs. Looking for rivers, a river that flows, not just a reservoir that collects. Check this out. They've got an image they're going to put on the screen. How many of you, we would all agree, God has more than enough? And, and then the world is in desperate need. So, so check this out. The world's needs, what, what are those? Food, hunger, or food and hunger, they kind of go together. Uh, food, water, uh, shelter, medicine. And then the ultimate need of the world is the gospel. It's the good news of the gospel, the saving grace, the goodness of God. So those are the, the, the needs of, of the world. And then God's supply. Listen, God owns it all. He, he's got more than enough. Who did God position in between the world's needs and God's supply? You. You. So, so what is God's investment strategy in meeting the world's needs. Could God just meet the world's needs? Yes or no? Yeah, God can do whatever he wants. But he positioned believers who will stand firm in the freedom of stewardship and generosity to be able to say yes and be a river of his blessing. How does the kingdom of God's blessing get to the earth? You and I. And he's looking for us not to be distracted with what he blesses us with, but to see it as a tool and an opportunity to see the kingdom extended. God's the only one that can turn a dollar into a soul. He's the only one that can take your talent. Those of you that serve on the dream team, it takes about 150 of you, every single servant. You guys are serving it up. What are you doing? You're extending the kingdom. Those of you who are, who are going, giving, and praying, and, and, and I just butchered that, you are... Praying, giving, and going with missions and outreach, you're making a huge difference. How, how does that happen? You're taking your talent and you're investing it in the kingdom. You're not just doing good, you're doing God. You're actually carrying him to homes, the community, and the world. And it's positioning ourselves right in the middle. It takes two legs and we want to stay firm on theirs. And then number two, it, it's, it's about money. And why is it about money? Why do we connect blessing with money. The Bible talks a whole lot about it. Every time someone worshiped, guess what they brought? An offering. Look at it. Old Testament and New Testament. Every single time people came to worship, what did they bring? An offering. Okay, I'm going to say it again, and the, the answer is offering. Every time someone came to worship, I'm just going to tell you, first service, y'all got to get louder, because the second service, they shout it down in here. So I'm just telling you, wake up. Every time someone gave, they brought an offering. They brought a gift to the Lord. Our pastors taught this from the very beginning. Anytime you're worshiping, you better bring an offering. Why? You better because it's a law? No. How could we not bring him something? He has given us so much. So, so it's whether it's a $20 bill or it's a $2 bill or if it's, I don't have, I don't have anything today, but I'm bringing you, you know, a song. We're, we are bringing something. Please do not bring cows and pigs. We don't receive those here. But... Maybe to my house if you butcher it. Okay, so anyway, but, but, but you get what I'm saying. We're bringing something to the Lord, not because it's law or we have to to get in. God doesn't need something. He doesn't need your money. The church doesn't need your money. 
I don't need your money. Well, you go, well, but, but, but how, did, how, did you, how did you build the church? How do you have the facilities? How do you, God builds the church because it's his church. These are his utilities. These are his, this is his carpet. That's his carpet square right there. It's his microphone. And you say, well, how did he do it? You had to have my money to do that. No, no, no. God used his money in your pocket to build his church. And you got to be careful when you start calling what's God's yours. Well, that's mine. Then we've lost the heart of stewardship and being faithful with what belongs to another. Your very breath is not your own. The very breath you breathe was a gift that he gave you. <sighs> no, my mom and dad, they, they did this thing. And then all of a sudden, then I came out. And then, it, no, 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 no. That was in the natural. But in the supernatural, you came from a kingdom before you were ever here. You were made in the image of God. Well, I, I went to school and I learned this ability and I learned this talent and I learned how to communicate and I learned how to do these things. No, you developed a gift that God placed inside of you. It's his, not yours. So when we position ourselves and we look and we say, I want to be a good steward of what belongs to God. Man, you have opened up the resources of heaven and all of a sudden you can't outgive God. You can't out-steward what God wants to give you and wants to bless you with. And so, so why... Why does this have to do uh, with, with money? One day we're going to figure that out. One day we can ask God that question. But Jesus too, 16 out of the 38 parables talk about possession and money. 16 out of 38. It's important to God. It's important to Jesus that we steward the things that he gives us, especially in the area of treasure or the area of finances. Look at this verse, most mis most, one of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Matthew 6, 21, for where, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Notice your treasure doesn't follow your heart, your heart follows your treasure. He says that which, when you put your heart or when you put your treasure there, notice your heart's not there yet. He says it will be. That means it's, you know I mean? Come on, English, grammar. It, it will be. That means it's not yet, but it will be. But when you put your treasure there, what's going to follow your treasure? Your heart. So it means we make a decision. Check this out. Because we, we have this concept, we'll be led with your heart. We'll listen to your heart. No, Jesus is saying, obey, then you'll see the results of your obedience. Don't wait to obey God to when you understand it. If you do, you'll be waiting and waiting and waiting. And then we live in compromise instead of obedience. He's looking for faithfulness. Just take him at his word. And this is what he said to do, not because... I understand there is blessing on the other side of obedience. But there comes this thing, this, this time in your growth in your relationship with God where he said it and that's enough. Like I honor him enough just to say, I may not understand it, I may not get it, but this is what you said to do, and I'm going to do it. Well, well, I need to trust him because of this is what he did in the past. And I get that. And, that, and that's great, and we can trust him because we see his faithfulness in the back. But even if you are brand new and you haven't seen the faithfulness, you feel like you haven't seen the faithfulness of God in a place, obey him anyway. Take him at his word anyway. Just obey just because he's good, just because he's faithful, just because he's God. And so being a blessing... It takes two legs. We know why it has to do with money. Hopefully you're convinced through his word that this is important. And then being a blessing. God wants to bless you for two reasons. Number one, he loves you. He blesses you because he loves you. As a parent, you want to bless your kids because you love them. You want to be good to them because you love them. They're yours. Well, how does God, he's a good father. And why does he want you blessed? Why does he want you blessed financially? Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to go, well, you know, I'm not blessed financially, but I'm blessed in this. No, God wants you to have enough financially and then enough to say yes and be a blessing to somebody else. Stop this whole thing. Well, I just don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't, I'm not supposed to be blessed in this area. Quit excusing yourself from the blessing of God in every area of your life. Every area. Listen, you might not be driving a Ferrari, 
We might not be this, the world, similar. we're not looking to the world to, to measure, our, to, to measure our, our blessing. We're looking to God, the giver of our blessing. We're not looking at our bank account to measure blessing and stewardship. We just want to be faithful with what God's given us. And we want to be in a position to be a blessing to those that are around us. So number one, he loves you. And number two, he wants you to be a blessing. He blesses you because he loves you, but then also he wants you to be a blessing. First Chronicles 4, 9. It says, now Jabez, everybody say Jabez, Jabez. was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Poor Jabez. The Hebrew actually means pain, hurt, or sorrow. That was... He caused that physically, but then that was his name. The next verse says, And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Whoo! So God granted him what he requested. It is okay for you to ask God to bless you. Just freeing you up. Standing firm in the freedom. It's for freedom that Christ has come to set you free. It's okay to ask God to bless you. Here was an honorable man. God called him honorable. More honorable than his brothers. He says, he prayed and asked God to bless him. And God granted his request. You know, James tells us we have not because we ask not. Maybe you're asking your boss or you're asking whoever gives you allowance. To my kids, no, you can't have any more. You know, we look to other places as our resource. We look to other places as, as our source. But when Jabez looked to God and said, God, will you bless me indeed? And why did he... Why did he fulfill his request? Because Jabez wanted to not cause pain, but wanted to be a blessing. Here, here's the word. Is it okay to just kind of take what, what, what Jabez's prayer was? God, would you bless me so that I can be a blessing? God, would you bless me this school year so that I can be a blessing? God, would you bless me in my marriage so that I can be a blessing? God, would you bless me in my church and in the place that you've called me so that I can be a blessing everywhere I go? God, would you bless me in 2023 in this economy so that I could be a blessing to those around me? Not so that it looks like I have, that it's about me, but to make the name of Jesus famous so that I would be a a testimony of your goodness and faithfulness. God, would you help me pay my bills so that I could be a blessing to others who can't pay their bills? God, would you be me? Would you, would you be me? Would you, would you bless me indeed so that I could be a blessing? What a bold prayer. And it's a prayer that God will answer. Ducks in a row. And it is not wrong to ask God to bless you. The enemy wants to keep you in a mindset or a, or a worldview that it would be, it would be unrighteous to ask God to bless you. Well, if you ask God to bless you, then you're, that's materialistic. Well, if you ask God to bless you, then, well, then that, that's name it, claim it, blab it, slab it. Or flab it, blab it, whatever. Blab it, grab it. There we go. I butchered that one. Or that's the, that's the, the, the prosperity gospel. That's the, listen, how many of you have been prospered because of the gospel? It's not about us. It's about positioning ourselves for the kingdom. It's about positioning ourselves for when God says, here's an open door that we're able to stand firm in freedom and be a blessing to those around us. Some of the most generous and best stewards of the people that are in my life are people that the world would look at and say are not wealthy. But when it comes to the kingdom, they're very wealthy. When it comes to the kingdom and how they manage what, what they have, wow. It's a beautiful picture of what Paul says. Look, look at this, and, here, and here's where we're going over the next few weeks. God's order for our ducks, it's found in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. He says, remember a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. He says, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your mind. Look at somebody next to you and say, you better make up your mind. 
that's not enough attitude. You got to look at it. You better make up your mind. That's, you know, you get high pitched when you, there you go. What you will give that will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Traditional verse, he loves a cheerful giver. Oh, dear Lord, we got to give. No. Yes, we have an opportunity to give. That's what he likes. Says God, here, here's the, I, there is so much of this that's God's part. We just got to make up our mind. We're going to position ourselves and let God do his part. Here, here's God's part. God can pour out the blessing in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything and everything. Did anybody come to church today ready to be ready for anything and everything? Like, are you ready to make up your mind and say, okay, I'm ready to get my ducks in a row and do it God's way so that I can be ready for anything and everything. It says more than just ready to do what needs to be done, as one psalmist puts it, I never, I never understood this before. Why is he referencing the, the psalmist? He's saying that this is the attitude that you and I should take on because this is the attitude of God. He says he throws caution to the wind, to the need, he gives to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living and right giving ways never run out, never wear out. I just want you to think about this for just a second. What if your giving never ran out? What if, what if your, your, your ways, what if, what if the, 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 this, this, uh, <clears throat> this relationship with God and the increase that you're seeing in your life in every area, what if it, what if it never went down? Hey, have you ever had things so good that you thought in your head for maybe just a second, oh, when, when's it going to end? It's so good. Everything's so great. Something's about to happen. Anybody ever thought that? Come on, be honest and shame the devil. Like, tell, tell the truth, shame the devil. You just think, oh, things are going so well right now. When's, when's it going to end? But what is he saying? Do you know with God, his goodness and his faithfulness and his promise, it never ends. It just keeps going and going and going. And so, Kathy, I was looking at this, and I was like, that's, that's the attribute of God and what, and what, what, what generosity and stewardship will do. will position yourselves with the blessing of God that in every season you just continue to see an increase in what God wants to do. That he's got more where that came from. It says, this most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us a great praise to God. Man, y'all, this is the dream life. This is, this is the dream life. This is not the struggle bus. This is the, the blessing bus. This is being in a position and a place that we have more than enough that he gives you something, it says food for you, but then something you can then give away. That's where I want to live. But what did Paul say? Make up your mind. It's got to be something up here. It's got, it's got to be, we determine in our mind, I'm going to make up my mind to stand firm in generosity and stewardship. And, and, and here's what I want you to do. Would you ask the Holy Spirit today, where do I need to grow? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to position myself? Maybe you're making excuses. Maybe you've said to God, God, I live on a fixed income. I don't know what you can do with that. He can do a whole lot when you put it in his hands. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about this or I'm in this position or I'm in that position. Listen, more than the positions in this world financially, let's position ourselves in the kingdom to say, God, here I am. Everything I have is yours. And I want to be a good steward. I want to be faithful with what you've given me, whatever it is, box of screws, the, the cinder block, whatever it is, God, I want to be faithful with what you've given me so that it extends your kingdom. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? You know, the ducks that you have, they're all yours. He's put them in your hand. So they're in your realm of influence, but they belong to God. And I would just ask you today from the word that you would kind of take that and submit that before the Lord and just say, Lord, where, are, where do my ducks need order? Would you show me? Paul says, make up your mind. 
So one of the most powerful prayers you can ever pray is to submit your mind to him, to decide today, God, I want to be generous, but I want to be a good steward. Time, talent, and treasure. So God, today, all over this room, those that are watching online, we just submit before you, here's your ducks back. And where they've gotten out of order or where it's a little bit confusing when it comes to our resources, where it's become maybe a distraction rather than a tool. God, we submit that before you today. And we make up the mind. We make up our minds today and submit our way of thinking to you. And we just ask you, God, we, we want your order. We want your plan for our finances. God, we want your kingdom to come, your will to be done in the area of our resources. We want to be good stewards of what you've given us. Because God, we don't want to just be blessed. We want to be a blessing. So would you just take a moment, church, right there where you are? and Maybe it's been a while or maybe you have never asked him, God bless me so that I can be a blessing. Just ask him that prayer. Just prayer Jabez. Lord, would you bless us indeed so that we can be a blessing everywhere we are? belongs to you anyway. We're your stewards. Father, I pray over the next few weeks that we would grow stronger in understanding what your word says, but I thank you that we would be quick to obey. That we wouldn't just try to wrap our brains around it completely and then obey, but that we're making a decision from the very get-go today that we will obey your order and your plan. So, Lord, here we are. We submit ourselves before you. We haven't always done it the way we needed to in the past, but today we thank you for a fresh start. God, we thank you that you can position us to be blessed and to be a blessing everywhere we go. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. With every head bowed and every eye closed, listen, you are blessed because Jesus died for you and gave his life for you. God loves you so much and he wants a personal relationship with you and he gave heaven's best. He was generous. He didn't hold back any. He gave heaven's best for you so that you could be blessed in this life but beyond that you would have eternity in heaven and there is a real hell and a real heaven. And heaven is your reward and a blessing that God wants to be your free gift. The Bible says that we have to choose. We have to make the decision to make Jesus the Lord of our lives. If today you would say, Michael, I need a relationship with him. I wanna put my trust in him for the first time or maybe he's just not been the priority of your life and today you need to come back and you need a fresh start. We're gonna say a prayer in just a moment. I just wanna know if you wanna be a part of that prayer. We're not gonna embarrass you or call you out or make you say anything or do anything. I just, just wanna know if that's you just by lifting your hand right now. If you say, yes, please pray for me today. I'm ready to meet Jesus. You can lift your hand and put it right back down. If you're in the house, you can put it down. Thank you, thank you. If you're watching online right now, thank you, sir. You can put it right back down. Watching online, you can be a part of this prayer. You can put something in the comment bar there. You can <laughs> raise your hand in your living room. That, that outward uh, sign is just a symbol of your heart to say, man, I am trusting Jesus with my heart. Anybody else want to be a part of that? Want to join these others and say, yes, thank you. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Way to go. Way to go. I'm going to give you some words to say. You can pray this prayer in your heart. Just pray it with all your heart as you surrender your life to Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. I believe Jesus, that you came and you died on the cross. I believe that you're real and that every word that you said is true. I believe that you beat death, sin, hell, and the grave, and that today you are alive and well seated in heaven. And today, I put my trust in that. I put my faith in you. I thank you that one day I will see you face to face in a place called heaven. And I thank you that right now I'm blessed because I have a personal relationship with you. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for a fresh start. Those of you that are recommitting your life today, just, just, just as powerful of a decision. God, thank you for a fresh start in my life today. Thank you for the, the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. You are flowing in me and through me. I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for loving me. In your name I pray, amen.